Eagle proud symbol of our country Keep on flying high up above And together we will stand And we'll restore the land Oh Eagle Keep on flying Eagle Welcome to Listen to the Eagle. It is Monday night in the great state of Mississippi. I am Brad Young, Executive Director of the Mississippi Wildlife Federation, coming to you live from the Reeds Metal Studios in downtown Jackson, Mississippi. I want to welcome everybody out there listening to us all across the state. We invite you to call in, tell us what's going on in your neck of the woods at one 800 251-5891, 1-800-251-5891, or if you are a C Spire inspired customer, as I am, you can give us a call at pound 444. Let us know what's going on with you in the world of hunting, fishing, and the great outdoors here in Mississippi. Always a lot going on in Mississippi. We uh, have no shortage of ample opportunity to get outside and enjoy the great outdoors. And uh, we're going to take a pause for a moment and take a phone call. We have a... Uh, a very special guest, Paul Ott. How are we, sir? Well, I am a great guest tonight, and I don't know what I'd do without NWF on the second Monday night of the month when they do all that blood work, man, and late. I tell you, I don't know what I'd do without y'all, but another great report, uh, Brad, and uh, everything's still in remission, and uh, we've stopped the physical uh, therapy now, and I'm getting back on a cane and kind of getting where I can kind of walk along. So, Shouldn't be too much longer now, brother, but I sure appreciate y'all being out the second Monday night with some good information from MWF, brother. Oh, yeah. Happy to do it. Happy to do it. And ha- glad to hear that you're doing well. So you're you're up and around a little bit now, huh? Able to get from one place to the next? Yeah, going from the walker to the cane and from the cane to do a little bit of walking on my own. And uh, I tell you, my son from Alabama has come over here with some kind of Alabama program that just keeps me hopping. And, but it is working very well. So the good news is, though, you know, once a month we check to be sure we're still in remission, uh, uh, Brad, and we're still in remission now. It's just a matter of getting strength and and, uh, and I'm back on the cane and getting off that cane and getting to walking on my own. And thanking everybody for the prayers. Boy, I tell you, the good Lord's answering the prayers. Uh, it sure is, Brad. Well, we are we are certainly glad to hear it. Tell us what's uh, what are the next steps in your recovery, Paul? I mean, you say well, that you you're going from the cane to be able to walk in on your own. Are you, are you taking any more treatments of any kind, or is it all just kind of therapy well, at this point? No, no, I'm I'm taking a, a, a treatment by pill right now. I'm not taking the shots. Uh, my kidney function is real good. It's a little off, and they do what they call an infusion, which brings bone back into the spine where this thing hit me, and I'll probably get it next. But, no, the next step is just basically uh, being able to get back to walking on my own like you do, you know, that I'll – Everything will be done. Mm-hmm. Well, that is, that so, is fantastic. We are certain, and I'm and I'm doing some walking on my own now too. By the way, well, we're certainly glad to hear it, Paul. And we're glad to hear that you're doing well. Certainly, we keep you in our thoughts and prayers. I know everybody out there listening, you know, can't wait to have you back at full speed. Uh, get back in here and get things started up again. Yeah, well, I'll be there next week with Youth Night and M Dot. Uh, the boys will be there, so I'll be there. Brad, and uh, I appreciate y'all, and I'll be a listener if you need me, brother. Well, we certainly do appreciate it. And tell us, tell us what's going on in your neck of the woods down there. We don't have a bird odd in here with us tonight. What's happening in southwest Mississippi these days? Well, uh, there, down here in the Scenic River uh, thing, everybody's a fishing man. I'm telling you the truth. Uh, looks like y'all got some fishing going. I see whether the Fort Wildlife Fishers and Parks has got a lot of stuff going on with kids fishing, and I'm sure there's going to be start some me and some talk about the extravaganza before long huh that's right that's right i've uh we we are getting that thing ramped up as we speak of course as you know being affiliated with the wildlife federation for as long as you have that extravaganza is pretty much a year-round production that we have to put on but uh but yeah yeah we're really starting to starting to things come together uh we've got a meeting about it with the board of directors this week and uh we're going to start promoting it. it's going to be a going to be a fantastic show can't wait to tell everybody about it fun promoting it so if y'all need anything i'll be a listing thank you thank you so much brad all right paul Ott, you get well and hope to talk uh, with you okay. soon okay boy i love y'all all right thank you uh, all right always good to hear mr paul Lott call in let us know how he's doing of course everybody out there sends their their thoughts and prayers with him for a for a speedy recovery uh he actually sounded better tonight i think than I, i've heard him in a while you can tell already that 
getting his strength back. I uh, can't wait to get him back in here. Things just obviously aren't the same without him here in the studio with us. So we, uh, we certainly look forward to having him back. Y'all give us a call at 1-800-251-5891, 1-800-251-5891, or pound 444. Let us know what the, what's going on in your neck of the woods. How is the fishing going? That's what I want to know. We're coming up against a break. Y'all stay tuned. We're going to be right back here shortly. Legendary entertainer Paul Ott brings you his greatest hits. Get them all in this special CD DVD combo set, including Old Blue. Many and a many of an early morning. I am Mississippi. I am everything good you have ever dreamed about. The right, arm of right Arm of America and many more. To order, visit listen to the or send $20 check or money order to Paul Ott's Greatest Hits, Box 219, Summit, Mississippi, 39666. Welcome back to Listen to the Eagle. I am Brad Young, Director of the Mississippi Wildlife Federation, subbing in for our good friend, Mr. Paul Ott, tonight. Paul Ott just gave us a call, let us know that he is doing well and on the road to recovery. Always good to hear from him, and of course, always good to hear that he is uh, becoming more and more mobile by the day. Y'all give us a call out there in Radio Land at 1 800 251 5891. That's 1 800 251 5891. Or if you're a C Spire inspired customer as i am you can call us at pound 444 let us know what's going on in your neck of the woods and speaking of the phone lines we've got our good friend dwight from big creek on the line dwight how are we doing tonight oh i'm going pretty good out there uh, miss brad i'm going go pretty good i got a question for you though all right send him my way well it's been about three weeks ago or so uh uh Mr. Paul mentioned, you know, just very briefly about uh, about Count Shelby who was going to kill off of, like 600 deer. Mm-hmm. And uh, I was just wondering if there, if there, if there, if anybody heard anything about that or mm-hmm. if they are a win. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's uh, I, somebody else called me about that a couple of weeks ago. And, uh, and as a matter of fact, there's some truth to it, but now it's not as bad as what everybody's making it out to be. Uh, what has happened is that the biologists on Camp Shelby uh, have identified the fact that they are holding far too many deer because they can't yeah. open up that camp to hunting the way that you can on, say, a Leaf River management area or a Red Creek management area, something like that. So the deer have become extremely overpopulated and have literally eaten themselves out of house and home. So what they have done... The biologists there at Camp Shelby have partnered up with us at the Mississippi Wildlife Federation to redu- reduce the herd. And now I don't know how many deer they're planning on on removing. You know, I've heard people, all kinds of conspiracy theories talking about, you know, hundreds of deer per day and things like that. And I can tell you that that's not going to happen. Uh, right. Anyone, yeah. anyone who's ever tried to do one of these health check knows that it's just not possible. You just can't take that many deer. So, you know, I don't know how many they actually plan on taking. It's not going to be in the hundreds by any means, uh, but they are going to remove several deer. But the good news to all of this is, is that they have partnered with us at the Wildlife Federation because the deer that they are removing, they are going to donate to our Hunter's Harvest Program. Uh, right. Yeah. Take- they're going to take them to Strix deer processing. Uh, they're going to process them into ground meat, and then they're going to donate them to one of the local food charities right there around Hattiesburg. So, you know, it's going to a good cause, you know, and it's it's all done in the name of wildlife management. They're not going to completely deer, depopulate the place. I can promise you that. There are going to be plenty of deer left over for everybody else. So, uh, so yeah, so it's a good thing. You know, it's kind of a win-win situation for everybody, I think. Yeah, 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 no doubt, because I'm, uh, you know, uh, you know, interested in it where, uh, what you say, uh, I can't, I can't think of off the top of my head right now, but, uh, uh, yeah, it just seems like they, it seems like they were doing it in the winter time. Though. It just seems that way. Yeah. 
Typically so. Typically when the Department of Wildlife and Fisheries do these herd health evaluations, which also were donated through the Hunter's Harvest Program, they, t- they typically do them right around the 1st of February, 1st to mid-February after hunting season's over. Mm-hmm. But, you know, that's uh, you know that's just a matter of preference. So, But I tell you what, Dwight, we got another call coming in, but I'm going to keep you posted on it, and I'll let you know how it all works out. And we appreciate you giving us a call. Yeah, yeah sure enough, man. I appreciate y'all too, buddy. All right, yeah, Dwight. Yeah. You have a good night. We'll talk Take with you care. soon. All right, then. All right. Thank you, Dwight, for calling in. We got another call on the line. We got our good friend, Mr. Ricky Flint from the Mississippi Department of Wildlife, Fisheries, and Parks. Uh, Ricky Flint is a man, Jim, who needs no introduction whatsoever because as wildlife <laughs> biologists go, you know, other than that bear biologist guy who left a few years ago, Ricky's about as famous as it comes, I would have to say. So, uh, so Ricky, we appreciate well, you taking time away from your, your autograph signings and your various paparazzi and all that to, to talk to us here on Listen to the Eagle. Well, alligators are very popular, and I just get to tag along. That's all there is to it. Well, hey, man, it counts. If you show up, it counts. Yeah. <laughs> well, Ricky, we were we wanted to get you on the on the program tonight to talk to us about some of the changes that are coming up with regard to the alligator season that's coming, how the permit process is going to work, some of the expanded areas that, that people can uh, can hunt in. What can you tell us about what's shaking in the alligator program? Well, uh, the basic story is that the alligator season itself, the regulations and the public water hunting zone, nothing has changed about any of that. Uh, the zones are still the same, the number of permits, uh, that we will send out in each zone is the same. Uh, nothing else has changed. The only thing that has changed is the permitting process, and we are going to move away from the first come, first serve online purchase process, and we're going back to an electronic application, and uh, we will start accepting those applications June 1st through the 7th. And you will be able to go anywhere that sells Mississippi hunting and fishing license, including your sporting goods stores, your Walmart. Uh, you'll be able to go online through our website and do it online there. Uh, you can actually call our 1-800-5-GO-HUNT uh, toll-free line uh, on the phone and do it there. And uh, you'll have seven days to do it. We're going to slow the whole process down. Uh, you know, with the first come, first serve process, uh, the biggest complaint, and we we heard the complaints, we understand that the process was so fast that um, people who were trying to get get in and buy a permit, uh, depending on factors that were beyond our control, things like internet speed, uh, server settings, uh, all those types of things. Uh, would depend on whether you were able to get through or not. And some people had the perception that they really didn't ever have their uh, name in the hat, so to speak. And we understand that. And so by slowing this process down, uh, all the customers will be able to know that they've made an application, that the application has been received, that it's in the zone that they chose. Uh, And if there's any kind of problems, there's a one-week period to fix it. Call us and let us fix it. Uh, I don't think there'll be any problems. The, so um, the so basically, for, be, Ricky, what you're saying then is that basically, so they'll have a week to put their name in the hat. So it's not going to be the big the big rush that it was before, and then the names exactly. will be drawn out of the hat after that. Exactly. There will essentially be seven drawings, one drawing in each of the seven zones after July, uh, June the 7th. I think we've got the first drawing slated to be around June 14th, and the winners uh, will be able, they will receive an email. All right. Hey, Ricky. And that e- hey, Ricky, yeah. hang on. We're coming up on a break. Stick with us. We'll be right back, okay? Paul Ott's The Day of the Lord CD DVD combo set is our free gift to you and your family. The Day of the Lord includes songs like I Am That I Am, Don't Cry For Me, and They Could Not Stop His Love, as well as special sermons by Tom Lester, Dr. Larry LeBlanc, and others. Paul's special holy visits and the printed Don't Cry For Me poster are also included. Get yours by calling 1-800-684-9486 or by letter to New Day of the Lord Ministries Foundation, Box 219, Summit, Mississippi, 39666.
Welcome back to Listen to the Eagle. I am Brad Young, the Mississippi Wildlife Federation Executive Director, filling in for Mr. Paul Lott tonight, who is uh, called in earlier tonight to let us know that he's doing well. You can give us a call, too, at 1-800-251-5891, or if you're a C Spire customer, you can call us at pound 444. Right now we have our, our good friend, Mr. Ricky Flynn, Alligator Program Coordinator for the Mississippi Department of Wildlife, Fisheries, and Parks on the line. Ricky has been telling us about the, the new process for getting your alligator tags. And Ricky, we were talking about how this year it's not going to be quite the, quite the rush that it was before on the first come, first serve basis. Now they're basically going to have a, a week to, uh, to, to apply, and then it'll be done, just kind of drawn out of a hat after that. Am I pretty much on point with that? Pretty much. Uh, we are getting away from the first come, first serve, first purchase process on the Internet, and we are going to an electronic application. As I was saying, customers will be able to go anywhere that sells Mississippi hunting and fishing license and buy an application. Uh, the application itself actually is free. Uh, there will be some, uh, you know, the, the typical electronic charges that are charged on when you buy a license uh through our process, so uh, somewhere between a dollar and a half and two and a half dollars, there'll be some fees in there uh, for the application. But the customers will be able to pick one zone and one application in that zone, and then we will do a drawing about a week later uh, through a third-party entity. Uh, the MDWFP will not be involved in the drawing, and that entity will uh, be simply drawing your customer ID number. Uh, that will be provided from our license department, uh, the license vendor up in Nashville, Tennessee, Active Outdoors. They'll provide those ID numbers uh, to the entity, and they'll they'll draw those, and that will then populate names with emails, uh, and emails will go out to those winners uh, with a link for them to electronically buy their permit at that time. Uh, once that email goes out, they'll have 48 hours to complete that purchase. We'll even send them a reminder email after 24 hours to uh, remind them to go and get that done. At the end of the 48-hour period, uh, if there are any permits that are unsold, we will then have a second drawing the following week to fulfill uh, the deficit of any permits that were not sold in that first drawing. Okay. They will not have to reapply again. Uh, it will be a drawing from all of those who were not drawn in the first drawing. So, so you, it's very so we, simple. So we're really going to make sure that that though, all those slots are filled then by having multiple drawings and by making sure that everybody's name stays in the hat even after the first drawing. That way you can get the yeah. maximum maximum effort out of everybody, huh? That is the intent. We hope that we do not undersell any permit out of the 920 that will be available. And I, I, I feel confident that the numbers of permits that will be available for the second drawing will be minimal. Uh, you know, people have things come up. Uh, after they get started and realize, number one, that maybe they don't have the money. Uh, mm -hmm. They they may not understand how much it costs. And, and that seems to be a reoccurring problem as people are getting interested and involved in trying to get these permits without reading all the information about what is involved. And it is a very involved process. It's not as easy as just going to Walmart, buying a license, and hopping on the water to go try and kill an alligator. We've got a lot of regulations and processes that have to be followed. Mm -hmm. And for that reason, we do offer a alligator hunting training class. Uh, this year it will be on July 15th at Roosevelt State Park. Okay. So somebody uh -huh. that gets into this the first time, and or even if they've done it before and they want to go back through the class, that will be available to them, and we'll tell them everything they need to know. That's right. A refresher never hurts. Well, look, I tell you what, we've got a call on the line. we got Rob from Hattiesburg who has an alligator question for you, Ricky. Rob, are you with okay. us? Yes, I am. Ricky Flint, this is Rob Doherty from Hattiesburg, Mississippi. Hey, How you Rob. doing? Man, why is this I kind of had a feeling that who that was. <laughs> well, I wanted to hear a little bit more about uh, how these alligators have to be harvested. You can't bait them up. You can't set hooks like they do down in South Louisiana. How, how do they have to catch these fish? I mean, these alligators. <laughs> yeah, that's a good question. Uh, basically, what I tell people from the beginning is if you – got predisposed ideas about alligator hunting by watching cable television, you need to just dispose of any of those ideas because that's not the way we do it. Uh, the alligator hunting season is a sport recreational process. It is not for commercial purposes. And the 
we do not allow baited set hooks or bait of any sort. Uh, the hunter actually has to capture the alligator first and have it restrained uh, before they can uh, dispatch the alligator. Uh, and the most popular way is for people to use a large casting rod with a weighted treble hook. They cast it over the back of the alligator, basically snagging it, and then reeling it into the boat. And then uh, once you have a snare or a noose about the alligator's head or at least one leg where the alligator is controlled, then uh, the hunter may take a shotgun, a long-barreled shotgun, out of a case uh, uh, loaded with bird shot, basically number six shot or smaller, and uh, dispatch the alligator at point-blank range with a round safely behind the skull into the spine. The alligator is quickly and humanely euthanized. And it's very safe. Uh, we've been doing this. This will be our 13th year, and we have had zero accidents involved with uh, the dispatch methods of uh, for hunters to take these alligators. It's a good question. Absolutely. Ricky, we appreciate you being on with us tonight, and uh, we're going to take a break right now. Y'all stick around. We're going to be right back with Listen to the Eagle. Legendary entertainer Paul Ott brings you his greatest hits. Get them all in this special CD-DVD combo set, including Old Blue. Many and many of an early morning. I am Mississippi. I am everything good you have ever dreamed about. And the right arm of, right arm of America. America. And many more. To order, visit listentotheeagle.com or send $20 check or money order to Paul Ott's Greatest Hits, Box 219, Summit, Mississippi, 39666. Welcome back to Listen to the Eagle. It is Monday night here in the Reeds Metal Studio in Jackson, Mississippi. Coming to you live, you can give us a call at 1-800-251-5891. This is going to be about our last segment for the night. But if you got something quick you wanted to talk to us about, 1-800-251-5891 or pound 444 if you're a C Spire customer, as I am. We've had some great calls tonight. We're glad to hear from our good friend Paul Ott, who I am poorly filling in for tonight. Glad to hear that he is up and doing well and will be back with us next week. We talked to Ricky Flint, who talked about the new alligator registration uh, for the upcoming hunts. Uh, uh, we talked a little bit about some upcoming Wildlife Federation events. And while we're talking about the Wildlife Federation, I wanted to kind of kind of talk about sort of what the Federation is all about. You know, we are Mississippi's oldest nonprofit conservation organization founded by sportsmen who wanted to have a say in how our wildlife and natural resources are managed in this state. And that is that continues to be our mission today is to be the voice of sportsmen, to be the voice of the outdoors for Mississippi. Uh, we serve as an umbrella organization. We have several other affiliate organizations that are affiliates of ours, everyone from the National Wild Turkey Federation, the Mississippi Hunting Dog Association, Coalition for Ethical Deer Hunting, and even the Rocky Mountain Elk Foundation. And uh, I wanted to take a quick moment to talk about the Rocky Mountain Elk Foundation. I had the pleasure to talk with Randy Waterhouse, who's uh, one of the directors there at Rocky Mountain Elk Foundation earlier today. And, you know, here in Mississippi, of course, we wouldn't think a whole lot about elk, you know, as far as it being an organization. But I want to tell you some of the work that, that Rocky Mountain Elk Foundation does, particularly with regard to getting kids outdoors and to introducing kids to hunting, really, really make them a great fit as an affiliate of ours. And we are so proud to have them. Uh, they are a great organization. You would be very surprised at how many people are members of the Rocky Mountain Elk Foundation all throughout Mississippi. Obviously, we don't hunt elk here, but uh, there are chapters uh, here in Mississippi. So I encourage you to to get involved with them. Uh, you know, get involved with these groups that are that are really in it for the same reasons that we're all here, which is to preserve our hunting heritage and to make sure that the next generation has that opportunity to hunt and fish just like you and I did growing up. Because believe me, uh, it cannot be done without our active participation. And, I, I, and I'm speaking not only, you know, getting your kids or your grandkids outdoors, but get other kids involved as well. You know, get those kids in the scout troops, get the kids in your church uh, youth groups, get all these kids outdoors and, and introduce them to what's out there. You know, any, like we say, anything that gets them off the couch Get some outside is good with us. That's why a big part of the Wildlife Federation is providing these opportunities through things like youth squirrel hunts, even through youth outdoor photography contests or kayak races like we have coming up. Anything to get these kids outdoors and introduce them to the sport of hunting. So I encourage you to check us out 
uh, online at mswildlife.org. That's mswildlife.org. You'll see lots of great information about some of our causes and some of the events that we have coming up. We have events throughout the year, and almost all of them have some kind of a youth participation component to them because that's a big part of who we are is getting those kids outdoors. So I encourage you to check us out. Once again, that's mswildlife.org. You can also see a list of all of our affiliate conservation organizations throughout the state. Uh, Like we said, we all work together uh, for one common goal. Uh, so please check us out. It's been a pleasure to be here with you tonight. Uh, I'm glad to glad to have the opportunity to come and talk to everybody about the Wildlife Federation. Uh, appreciate Paul Ott giving me the chance to come and talk, and I uh, look forward to talking with you again next month.